Now you're here for first and football. Remember two days ago, the Bengals released one throw from Joe Burrow. Well, guess what? They unloaded the clip yesterday. There's Joe Burrow outside with a backwards hat on running around. We got him inside. We got him slow-mo. Oh, yeah. We got him fast motion. Oh, yeah. We got him throwing to receivers. We got receivers catching it. They have everything oh, yeah. from Joe Burrow practice yesterday. So remember, Joe Burrow will be without Boyd and Mixon. Do you think that this team will miss some of those skilled players? Yeah, of course they're going to miss them. Uh, yeah, Boyd, I think, is going to the Titans. Did I see that yesterday. Uh, obviously, Higgins is ticked off about his contract. Mixon is gone. Uh, their best defensive player wants out of town without a new contract. But, man, he looked good. He, did. he looked good. We have not seen that Joe Burrow, unfortunately, in a long time because here at the CAF last summer, so the first three, four games of last year, he wasn't himself, obviously. He was really a pocket pass to throw it on one leg. Then the wrist of the hand goes, and the rest of the season went out the window with him. I'll tell you this. If that's the – and I know it's four plays. I know he's in shorts. I know there's nobody – I know all the th reasons yep. not to fall in love with that or, you know, to get crazy about that. But that's Joe Burrow. We just saw a little teeny glimpse of what Joe Burrow has been in his NFL career. And, again, this is going to be a crazy division because if you, if you assume health, which is probably a silly thing to do, you are talking about any one of those teams coming first – in my opinion, any one of those teams could come in last. I think it's the best division, deepest division in football. But as a fan who's had his moments with the city of Cincinnati, and I have, seeing that Joe Burrow, I get a little, uh, I get a little moist. I'm not going to lie to you. I get a little moist about the prospects of having one of our great players back in our league. Look, the reality of it is when the Cincinnati Bengals, it, it matters to upgrade your personnel when you have a great quarterback, but when your great quarterback is not on the field, which he wasn't for them last season, uh -huh. it does not matter. What we just saw, like you said, we know what he can be. We know what he has been when he's healthy. If he's healthy and he is that guy that we're seeing on this screen right now, yep. this team will have a chance because as we've seen throughout the course of the NFL, when you have a guy under center that can be a difference maker, your team will have a chance to compete. He is one of the best quarterbacks in this game. If he's healthy, this team will have a chance. Yeah, the only thing that – look, this will also be fair. This video, I don't know if it was doctored or not, but he's only completing passes to fast white guys. Yes, I, I mean, did notice that. You know, I did notice that. Probably not the recipe for yeah. success. Yeah. <laughs> number 15 and number 16. <laughs> the only guys there. Not it's, recipe for success. You told me to say it, Tim. I mean, <laughs> now, didn't Tom Brady have a guy <laughs> – <laughs> that he was throwing to in a slot, and he he was I think Every year, he, he, was, he, was, he was white, right? Boy, boy. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And he won championships. And they That's said all Tim I'm shouldn't saying. be here for football. Saturday. Right. I, That's all I'm saying. I, I'm just, I, 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 you said it. I saw that. <laughs> Moving on to second in football, maybe Patrick Mahomes is going to have to consider some new receiving options because we have some more concerning news about Rasheed Rice. We all know about the car accident from a few weeks ago that happened in Dallas. Well, the latest is that there was a nightclub incident involved, someone allegedly hitting a photographer that Rice is being investigated for. So, Craig, here's my question for you. What does this all mean about Rice's future with the Chiefs in the NFL? Well, I don't know. I, I can't speak about his long-term future, but he's going to be suspended. He's going to be suspended because of the traffic situation, you know, and driving like a knucklehead. And, again, as you've said many times in the show, grace of God, he didn't get hurt. No one else got hurt. Beyond, I know there were some minor injuries. I don't want to minimize that because if you're the one dealing with that, I'm sure it's a very big deal to you. I know he's being sued for like eight or nine, ten million bucks from the people that were involved in that accident. But here's what's problematic about it. I guarantee you that the Kansas City Chiefs and or the NFL and his agents sat him down after the traffic accident and said, look, don't get in any more trouble. Correct. Stay out of trouble. Don't go out. Don't associate with certain people. Keep your nose clean so we can figure this out. We got lawyers. We got agents. We'll figure it out for you. No more trouble. And if the story is true, and I know... They're, they're two very different things, getting in a bar situation versus, you know, the traffic accident. You know, very, very different things. But he's being investigated for assault, mm. right? And my gut is that they're investigating him because someone said he was the guy to punch somebody yeah. or did something, whatever it might be, right? So to me, and I say this all the time, and you guys can double down on this, but please, and the sport's irrelevant to me. Being a professional athlete is not a right. 
It is a privilege to do what you guys got to do uh, throughout your lives, uh, not just from a financial standpoint, but just to be a pro athlete in this country. And there are still kids out there who don't recognize that. And we can't expect everybody to. You mature at different levels, obviously. Your crew of guys is different. And it's easy for me to say, sitting here going, don't hang out with those guys. Don't be stupid. Don't put yourself in harm's way. Not knowing what a guy's background is or why he hangs out maybe with certain people in his life. I've always told this story, and it meant something to me where it's resonated, where Allen Iverson, the great Hall of Fame basketball player, when he was in Philadelphia and I was in Philly, had 23 guys on his payroll, each making 100 grand or more. And someone once said to him, AI, what do they do? And he goes, nothing. They're my friends. And they had a pact as guys in Newport News, Virginia. Mm -hmm. If one of us gets out of here, uh, we all go with. And many people can't appreciate that that's uh, your word is your bond. So I'm not suggesting that Rasheed Rice is a bad guy even. Mm -hmm. But now he's being stupid. And his stupidity is going to cost him the opportunity to be a professional athlete and to, and to make the money that comes along with being a top-tier professional athlete. And there will come a day, and I've lived it, where he's going to look back and go, well, how stupid was I? I had this great opportunity to not have to worry about the number one thing we all worry about, and that's money. And I blew it because I was being a knucklehead, and I'm bothered by it. Yeah, the easy part is to play football. The, the, the challenging part is to navigate what comes along with being a player that he is now considered with the Kansas City Chiefs, coming off a Super Bowl, having impact, having value to this team. Now you have to navigate being that guy and being Rasheed Rice outside of that helmet, but also understanding I am still a representation of those other guys in the locker room and that organization at all times. And I think sometimes, I'm not going to say it's stupid, it's immaturity. It's yep. Because as a young guy, you have to go through experiences and sometimes you learn from them quicker than you do, than you don't. This is one of those moments, another one of those moments where you, you want to start seeing him learn from these mistakes and removing himself from these situations yep. moving forward. And here's what he's going to learn the hard way. They went out and got Hollywood Brown. They drafted the kid out of Texas Save who runs a 4-2-40. Yep. And all of a sudden, well, yeah, look, you had a great year last year. You were a huge part of us winning a Super Bowl. And your Mahomes loves you and trusts you on the football field. If you're not here, the, the, the nature of being a pro athlete is – Ain't nobody picking you up. It's going to be, you know, sweep him on. off because I can play too. And he's going to find out, unfortunately, the hard way that they're not going to worry about Rasheed Rice if Worley is catching balls, you know, 40, 50 yards down the field. If Hollywood Brown does what they think he's going to do, he'll be a distant memory like that. And it'll be his fault, nobody else's. How do you feel about love and your expectations for this team next season? Uh, that, that quote's a complete waste of my time, I can tell you that. What do you think the GM's going to say? We're right. really concerned about Jordan Love. He had a great year. He won a playoff game. Like, what do you want the general manager to say? The Green Bay Packers are going to be a good football team. I think they're more talented than they were last year. That division all of a sudden is going to be more competitive than it's been for a very long time. You know, the Lions are still the Kings because they won the division, and they essentially bring everybody back, right? Mm -hmm. You've got Green Bay. Love the addition of Xavier McKinney uh, playing uh, safety for them. Love the upgraded running back with Josh Jacobs. You've got developing wide receivers, which mm -hmm. you can speak to. And a quarterback that I think proved to everybody that, yeah, I'm a legitimate NFL quarterback. Now you take the next step of proving you're an elite quarterback, a franchise quarterback. And we certainly saw glimpses of that. And winning a playoff game in Dallas, you know, is kind of like, you know, uh, you know uh, what's uh, evidence number one that the kid can play in a big spot, obviously. But that division's going to be tough because the Bears are going to be good, Greg. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough division, but this is one of those moments where, for Jordan Love, it's about – Mike McCarthy used to talk about this when, when we were in Green Bay, stacking success. How well do you stack success? They had success because of what he was able to do under center and how he was able to perform late in the season particularly and then in the playoffs. Can he build on that and then elevate the guys around him? That's when you start to, to put guys in the category of elitism. Sure. When you start to improve the guys around you and make them better, 
Then you start talking about guys being equal. Question for you. Do you think Mike McCarthy uses that stacking success speech in Dallas? All right, fellas, 12 wins. That's all we care about. Let's just get 12 regular season wins. Let's just stack regular seasons with 12 wins. No one's going to pay attention to the postseason. Keep stacking those regular season wins, boys. I'm not no. concerned what he's doing in Dallas. It worked in Green Bay, Mike. It worked in Green Bay. I'm quite sure he said that speech to the Dallas Cowboys. It, they, they, weren't, they weren't listening. Clearly, they were not listening. It is fourth in football. We are going for it. So there are some interesting reports about Kirk Cousins. Remember, he left Minnesota, right? And there are reports that he left Minnesota because he heard that they were going to well, use everybody a, leaves uh, Minnesota. Here we go. On a quarterback. <laughs> So then what does he do? He signs with the Falcons, and then what do the Falcons do? They do exactly what he was concerned about Minnesota doing. They used a high draft pick, number eight, on a quarterback, Michael Penix. So, Craig, what do you make of all these reports, and should Kirk Cousins feel a certain way about the draft choice of the Falcons? No, because he's got a hundred million guarantee coming his way. Thank you, Greg. And he's in his mid-30s. And he's never won a damn thing in the NFL. So, so, so to me, you look, you want to know you're the guy. You don't want to think that the team's already looking past you to your successor. Nobody wants to be in that situation. But I can promise you this, that when the check came in for 40 or 50 million bucks, <laughs> when he signed the contract, he wasn't, you could draft nine quarterbacks. I don't give a damn. I'm 36 years old, coming over torn Achilles, and you guaranteed me $100 million? Let me, draft let me say everybody. Let me say Matter of fact, you know what you, you could do, Tim? You could go out there. You could take some DNA from Tom Brady, create super quarterbacks in a lab, and I'm good because I got $100 million guaranteed. First of all, when they give you that check, you got to pay taxes. Oh, stop, Tim. Oh, I just got oh, it. So oh, I just, oh, everybody, I just yeah, want right. everybody to believe that. Yeah, that yeah, 40, right, 50 right. million yeah. dollars ain't really 40, 50 million dollars. Yeah. Y'all yeah, can right. say whatever y'all want to say. Yeah, I'm stop saying. Stop it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Another yeah. thing. Yeah, the the net he's not sucks. playing for Only six games. Million. He's not playing for six games. Who, who, who's, somebody got to play in Someone's front of him. Someone's got to play. So, so I'm going to go in there with no quarterback. Yeah. I got to, uh, who, who's going to start and for by the, the Falcons? Way, Let me ask you this. Who's going to start for the Falcons? Uh, it's going to be Penix or him? Oh, oh Pen yeah. it can't be him. So if we, don't have, if we don't have a quarterback, Look, it's got to be Penix. And I will say this, and I read that story yesterday too, and it just goes along the line of what I've been saying all weekend in the show. He did not leave Minnesota because Minnesota was going to draft <laughs> J.J. McCarthy. <laughs> He left Minnesota because everybody leaves Minnesota. Stop it. Everybody. The only two guys that It wasn't that about the leave. money. No. He left Minnesota Was Minnesota going to give him that other, money? Other than Kirby Puckett, was they gonna, everybody was left they Minnesota. Was they going to give him that money? Probably not. No, okay. probably yeah, not. You got to get your money. Probably not. I mean, the Stars left Minnesota. The Lakers left Minnesota. Kevin Garnett left Minnesota. Randy Moss left Minnesota. Stefan Diggs left Minnesota. The one guy you kept Arbery. beat his kid with a stick. That's the one guy you kept for That's the majority of his career. So shut wow. up, Minnesota. Tired of hearing your sorry asses <laughs> talk about how wow. none of those people want to, wanted to leave Minnesota. You even said no to Poppy. David Ortiz, one of the great power hitters in the sport of baseball, is like, get me out of Minnesota. Target left Minnesota. Buffalo Wild Are Wings we going to left break? Minnesota. <laughs> hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.